thank you to the families who have endured the loss of loved ones. But most importantly, the reason that we are here today, tomorrow, uh, thank you uh, to the folks who paid the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom. It's in their memory that we are here. As a prosperous nation, we have a spectrum uh, of people that live in our nation. Uh, People do many different jobs, have many different beliefs. Though all different, we are blessed by our Creator to have the opportunity to show appreciation for those who have gone before. I want to talk about just a a few young men this morning. Uh, The first young man is not a man who served, but the other two are. I want to show you a contrast between some folks who live in the United States and some folks who have paid the ultimate sacrifice. The first young man uh, is a person who thinks and talks only about himself. I will not mention his name because it is not in his memory that we are here. Uh, He has made millions in the music industry and has said talent rises above everything else. He's been caught on camera defacing and shouting expletives at former presidents, doing things that we won't talk about. After being arrested for drag racing, this young man shouted expletives at the cops and gave a big grin for his picture when he got to the sheriff's office. At one point, this young man said, I'm 19 with five number one albums. 19 and I've seen the whole world. 19 and I've accomplished more than I could have ever dreamed of. I'm 19 and it must be scary to some people to think that this is just the beginning. He's done a lot of things we won't go into. And again, I say, today, today and tomorrow is not about him. I'm going to tell you of two other young men very close in age, 20 and 22, who we do remember and we do honor today and tomorrow. Corporal Jonathan Yale and Lance Corporal Jordan Herter. I will tell you their story as I heard it from Marine Lieutenant General John Kelly. Seven years ago, in Ramadi, Iraq, Corporal Yale from 1-9, the Walking Dead Battalion, and Lance Corporal Herter from 2-8 Battalion were assuming watch at the gate of their post. Their post housed 50 Marines and 100 Iraqi police. Yale was from Virginia with a wife and daughter. He supported his mother and his sister on a salary of $23,000 a year. Herter, on the other hand, was a middle-class kid from Long Island. They were from two completely different worlds and were brought together by the bond of serving their country. Their sergeant asked them to stand post at the gate of their outpost. Herder had just come to Ramadi. Yale was just leaving, and so they were training, doing a swap over. A few minutes into their post, a large blue truck turned onto their alley and sped toward them. The truck stopped just short of where the two Marines were standing and shooting, and posted and detonated, killing both the Marines. 24 brick masonry houses were decimated. A mosque 100 yards away collapsed, and the truck engine was found 100 yards away, had torn down a house on its way through. Two died, and because of these two young infantrymen, they didn't have it in their DNA to run from danger. They saved the lives of 150 Marines and Iraqi policemen. As there were no witnesses, American witnesses, to this event, General John Kelly decided that he had better travel to Ramadi Uh, to make sure that the Marines were properly honored. A half dozen Iraqi police all told the same story. The blue truck turned down the alley and immediately sped up as it made its way towards the the outpost through the serpentine HESCO barriers. The Iraqis said, we all knew immediately what was going on as soon as the two Marines began to open fire. The Iraqi police then related that some of the Iraqi police also fired and then to every single one of them fled before the detonation. All of the Iraqis survived. Many were injured, some seriously. One of the Iraqi policemen elaborated with tears in his eyes. They'd run like any normal man would to save his life. The Iraqi said that the Marines were not normal. Choking past emotion, he said, Sir, in the name of God, no sane man would have stood there and done what they did. No sane man. They saved us all. Lieutenant General Kelly came out to find a couple days later that there was security footage that survived. It took exactly six seconds after reviewing the video, it took exactly six seconds from the time the truck turned onto their alley till it stopped and detonated. You can watch the last six seconds of these Marines' lives. I suppose it took about a second for the two Marines to separately come to the same conclusion about what was going on once the truck came into their view at the far end of the valley. Exactly no time to talk it over or call the sergeant who told them to stand duty. Only enough time to take half an instant and think about what the sergeant had told them. 
let no unauthorized personnel or vehicle pass. The two Marines had about five seconds left to live. It took maybe another two seconds for them to present their weapons, take aim, and open up. By the time the truck was halfway through the barriers and gaining speed the whole time. Here the recording shows a number of Iraqi police, some of whom have fired their AKs, now scattering. Some running right past the Marines that only had seconds left to live. For about two more seconds, the recording shows the Marines' weapons firing nonstop. The truck's windshield exploding into shards of glass as the rounds take it apart and torn to the insurgent who is driving it. American and Iraqi, bedded down in their barracks behind them, were totally unaware of the fact that their lives depended on these two Marines standing between them and the suicide bomber. The recording shows a truck careening to a stop immediately in front of the two Marines. In all of the instantaneous violence, Yale and Herder never hesitated. By all reports and by the recording, they never even stepped back. They never started to step aside. They never even shifted their weight. With their feet spread shoulder width apart, they leaned into danger, firing as fast as they could, as fast as they could work their weapons. They had only one second left to live. The truck exploded, the cameras go blank, and two young men went to meet their god. Six seconds. Not enough time to think about their families, their country, their flag, or about their lives or their deaths, but more than enough time for two brave young men to do their duty into eternity. I've told you about three young men this morning. One is still able to do something honorable with his life because of the other two. I thank the men and women who have paid the ultimate sacrifice for our country. I thank God for the opportunity to fight for our freedom and for our liberty. Nathan Hale said, I only regret that I have but one life to give for my country. I thank two young men, Jonathan Thornsberry from over here in Gray, who perished in Fallujah on October 22, 2006, and Jack Blevins, who passed away recently this January because of his service in Fallujah. In closing, it is on your bulletin, God says in his word, Greater love hath no man than this, than to lay down his life for his friends.